based on your skills, experience, mm. and what makes you happy. What are the tips that you can give? Well, yeah. first of all, I don't really like giving tips. It's just, just, just put, put that out there. I don't like giving tips to, to, to people. If somebody were to ask me, like, what should I do if I'm starting out? Find um, your medium. That's the first thing. You know, find your medium because in the art world, you have to have your medium, your style. You can't jump from one style to another. You have to find your own identity. That's that's how collectors and fans and you know different people who would buy your work identify your art, your style and your medium. Stick to that. There's a connection that I have with my subjects, and I don't necessarily always choose um, my subjects like on the fly. Like, oh yeah, can I draw you like that? I don't. I, I really choose the people, especially in those subjects. You know, BDSM. I think that goes to our second uh, point, which is um, choosing your subject. I I have a habit of declining commission works because some people would like, oh, you're an artist. Can I? Can you do this for me? The first thing I do is I show them my work. This is my work. This is how I do my shit. So, if you like that, and you you should have the expectation that my artwork that you want me to do will somehow look like this. You mentioned that you have declined a couple of commissioned work. You do the sketching, or do you do the art the following day, or whatever you feel like? Okay, let's do it now. At first, I would take photos. You know, I would go to their place or anywhere comfortable for them. Um, different angles, different you know lightings. I would make sketches first, like rough sketches of what I want to do, and then I would send it to them. This is a tricky part about commission work, especially with my medium, because it's not digital. If I draw it, that's it. I can't erase it. I can't undo it. I really have to make rough sketches first and make them see what I'm doing, and then oh, it's okay, but oh, this is good for you. Okay, and then once. They say, give the go-ahead, then okay, fine. And I'll start laying down the ink. And when yeah, the ink yeah. is there, it, I can't change it anymore. That's number three, which is like the process of uh, creating art, which is... You have to do it in a place that's comfortable for them. You know, like maybe yeah, their, yeah. their house or somebody, somewhere that's familiar to them. What made me look at your art really was like, oh my god, I met this guy in Poblacion. You do these very provocative kind of art. It's like, make sure that your subject is comfortable and then you're comfortable. What about with time? Do you think... Time plays a role. Doing. Let's say if it's gonna be a live, live art, like you know, live live sketching, then you have to take breaks. Like I've done this myself. I have modeled. I have modeled for other artists, so they break it down into different um, intervals. Like you have a five minute pose, you have a ten minute pose, you have a fifteen minute pose, you have a thirty minute pose. In order for me to get really detailed with the artwork, I have to take a photo of that. But you really have to take breaks. Because yeah, yeah. I have done it myself. I have a house <laughs> model before. And you really have to understand like your body as far as like... Because you think that posing like this is okay for 10 seconds, right? But if you hold that pose for 10 minutes, just just 10 minutes, yeah. you will your body will fatigue. Like, right, this, right. this will be here after 10 minutes, you know, it's not gonna be staying like that. This also goes out to like the aspiring um, figure models out there. The key yeah. is, um, is to not stay still, is to, is to know how to get back. Like if it's a 30 minute post, then you might want to post like something that's not so complicated. Maybe okay. just down or lying down. If it's yeah. like five minute post, then maybe you can do some dynamic poses. Oh, this is gonna be a five minute post, so just, you know. Just, you can do some wild shit. Like you can you can stand up or do some yoga poses, but it's only gonna be for five minutes. Yes. If it's thirty minutes, I would ask them to like maybe sit down and make yourself very comfortable because this is gonna take a while. If I'm the subject and I want a certain pose, mm. but then I know that oh my god, I can only hold this pose for a few seconds or maybe a minute tops. Um, is it possible that I take a picture of the kind of draw or the kind of sketch that I was thinking uh take a picture of that and then have a mirror just in case i get tired i can see myself i can see my reflection but also i have a, a photo to refer <laughs> sure i mean i've never actually thought of that but yeah a, a mirror would be nice for the model yeah. to check out her pose it's still the same the, the thing that takes much a lot of the time is to figure out the concept like the, the idea you know to figure out the the correct pose that you want the conception of the artwork the, the execution itself doesn't take a while, doesn't take long. For me at okay. least, you know, the person who's commissioning me has a deadline, then sure, I will have to respect it. That's why I ask them, what's your deadline? 
when it comes to exhibits, when the curator says, oh, we have an exhibit and we want to make an artwork, blah, blah, blah. Um, usually they tell it like months in advance. I take my sweet time with that shit. Like, I was, yeah. yeah. Even though they tell me, this is a bad habit for me too. Like, uh, I, but I'm sure all a lot of artists do this. Like, they give you months ahead, months in advance to do the artwork, but you start doing it like a week before the exhibit. <laughs> bad habit that I do. But I really take my time to really figure out my subjects and like the idea of the artwork and all that stuff because that's that's the harder part for me. I don't know if you ever, you've ever thought of this. What if you suggested to your subject, okay, we're gonna have a normal conversation, very casual, but I'm gonna keep a phone here and it's gonna be recording us. So mm. let's say um, the following day or whenever you decide to start the work, you mm. can actually play that video while you're starting to design or while you're starting to sketch. Yeah. And then, you know, you start to remember all those feelings again, your impressions of the person, but a background sensation that you feel because while you're sketching your all of these senses all of these all of the conversations that you had is all coming back so i feel like that could give an extra push to while you're creating art so i don't know if you've thought about that or if you think that the subject would be open <laughs> yeah that's it's not bad that's not a, not a bad um thing to do as long as the, the, i guess the person is okay with it to be recorded yeah. If it helps you, it helps you. I mean, I, for me, I've never thought of that. I've never thought of doing something like that. But I guess it wouldn't hurt. What about food? Because, especially with girls, but I don't want to generalize. But, you know, let's say, oh, okay, I want to look... We all have different body types. And what we find, you know, beautiful is very, you know, subjective. Can you please make me look like a certain celebrity? But my body is not like that, I know, right? Um, but I'm, I'm just trying to be realistic here or make my waistline a little bit narrower. It de- really depends on the artist if if you will accept that. And if you are an, an artist doing commission work and they are the client, it's it's the old, it's like the, uh, the, the, the the law of the land. Whatever the client wants, you're gonna have to you know do it. If you're not comfortable with that, maybe maybe compromise, right? And I love drawing different body types, and I never. Like, I, I'm very keen on detail. That's why when I, I draw somebody, the fold of their, of their skin or the blemishes in their face, I try to capture them as much as I can because that's cool. I mean, it makes it beautiful. Well, there's this one girl who I um, drew. She's really overweight. And that's one of her biggest insecurities, of course, because her body is not like conventionally. And then I drew her. It's like I took a lot of photos of her. You know, just get comfortable, remove your clothes, you know, it's a safe space. Okay. With this girl, I drew the very first photo I took of her because that was the moment when she's like, not sure if she want to do this, but she's in her head, it's like, fuck it. And you can see it in her face. Wow. Right? So I drew that and I captured that. I captured her expression in the art. Yeah. And the first, when I exhibited it, people were like, I love this artwork. It sold, it sold like in the first hour I hung it. It's like, it's the person who saw it, the first person who saw it, he said like, I, I don't mind her body, but it's her stare. <laughs> but, you know, and if I could make someone look at the person's face rather than their body. This person that I drew this artwork on is really insecure of her body. And she never really, you know, I know it's a, an uphill battle for her to like to to maybe improve her physique and all that and be healthier, I suppose. But you also have to remember that there are other qualities about you that people will find beautiful. And I guess I just kind of lifted that for her, you know, yeah. her, face, her eyes. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, I, the drawing was like after it sold in the exhibit, people were still asking, "Is this for sale?" Because, oh my! Like you know, they really love that artwork, and I really do. It's like one of my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, I also think it's the relatability where, unfortunately, what is considered beautiful seems so just one one straight line. Where, yeah. like for me personally, I don't know if it's a if it's a thing where you want what you don't have. But when I used to have a gown rental shop, I would if you look at my page, my models are all different. I feel like all all spectrums, all nationalities, because. I don't just want someone who is supposed to be, you know, using papaya soap kind of thing. So -hmm. you'll see someone who really embodies what a Filipina beauty is. And I'm not even talking about Miss Universe type. Because it's like half lahi sila all the time. eh. This one is like Filipina talaga. So 
I feel like the reason why it sold fast and people were wanting it is because it's so relatable and not just because of her figure but um, like you mentioned her face where she's so vulnerable mm. she was unsure but she's like oh my god at the end of the day just let let loose mm. so mm. we that's can't really also, yeah, yeah that's what I learned from from modeling as well I mean not a lot there's not a lot of nude male models in the Philippines because there's this unspoken insecurity that men have it, like like the Filipino man at specifically it's it's um or men in general right like there's a lot of insecurities that people don't talk about because men are, aren't allowed to be insecure it's like how we are programmed the society kind of program program men to be men and you shouldn't be insecure and all that but there's a lot of hurt and, and pain and, and 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 insecurity that men have and most of them are actually physical you know some of yeah. most physical. And, and by removing my clothes and not giving a shit about like what people would say that kind of I, I because a little bit of uh, it turns me into a little bit of uh, an advocate of that like body positivity because when I first did it like of course I was afraid like man shit the people are gonna see my walls but eventually when you see these artists make your artwork your image in their art and they kind of feed off your image you start you know for the lack of a better term I felt really beautiful <laughs> you feel you felt really accepted because they just kind of accept you. Like the art, the artist just accepts you as who you are. They drew you as who you are, as how they saw you. And I guess that's the most empowering thing about being a model for artists, because you, not a lot of people can get the chance to to be appreciated that way. Because yeah. there's nobody else who will appreciate your physical, your physical attributes, your body more than somebody who's drawing it. Right. I mean, right now, because because yeah. we look at you. In a different way, we look at you in a, almost like a micro microscopic way. Like I would look at your blemishes, the the beautiful parts of your face or the the ugly parts of your face, and I would not see them as ugly or beautiful. It's just part of your face. Boom! I feel like I feel like that sums up everything. I feel like this is already so <laughs> um, eye opening, especially those who have issues about their bodies. What um, got my attention, aside from the fact that it's you making the drawings or you creating the art. Was the BDSM because mm-hmm. you know again it's taboo it's something not spoken but if somebody even attempts to practice it but but you know even even thinking about it they might even worry that their partners are not open to it so is it something that came from you or did the client ask for it? It came from me. It's like it's it's a it's been an ongoing practice that I've been doing as well. BDSM <laughs> mostly yeah. like bondage. And, uh, what does it stand for? Bondage, domination, submission, yeah. and masochism. It expands more than that, of course. Okay. Um, but what I practice more is domination and bondage. Putting it in my art, kind of, in a, in a sense, it's it's not a lot of artists are doing this as a subject. So that that kind of gives me an edge over the other ones. Kind of also put me in a in a difficult spot because it's not really sellable very much here in the Philippines. Yeah. My target business which is the collectors and all that. I guess I put it in my artwork as as the main theme of my works is because I want to educate people more about it. normal we call them vanilla. <laughs> There's a lot of things vanilla people can learn from BDSM even if they're not into BDSM. The idea of consent, the idea of negotiation, the idea of contracts, all these things um, normal normal couples or no, normal people would just go and jump into a relationship or hook up or whatever without actually negotiating boundaries without actually setting um, you know setting hard nose right and and these things you can if you learn BDSM you, these are basic stuff that you you will know in the beginning that I think people could benefit from if they learn from it that's why my artworks they open that conversation they would ask you like oh why is this girl getting tied here what's going on here well, yeah. I would explain to them that this girl, if you believe it, is in extreme ecstasy just by being tied there. Yeah. You know, right? Because she actually gave that trust to somebody. Yeah. Because trust is a big thing in BDSM. It's like if you don't have trust for your partner, it's not going to work. With an art artist and its subject, trust. Yeah. BDSM is not just about sex. People always think it's about sex. Yeah. It's actually 
It can be about sex, but it's not about sex. Most often, it's about emotion, emotions and connections, and, and, and that's, that's, that goes way beyond the physical. You know? It's a beautiful thing when, that, when you're involved with somebody and you really like them. You don't want to fuck it up, right? And that's just the kind of person that I am. It's like, um, I ask many questions, you know, because I want to know that I'm doing the right thing. I'm not overstepping your boundaries. I'm not triggering some kind of trauma here or something. <laughs> like you know, the true gentleman you are. Not a lot of guys do that. They just assume or they act oblivious or they are oblivious. <laughs> problem men, men love to assume things. That's another uh, conversation, probably in another episode. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, wow, I feel like... Yeah, you barely scratched the surface of what I really want to talk about because you have so many questions in, yeah. in that you sent me and we only scratched the surface of one, you know. How does it make you feel when you create art? And uh, is that mutual for the subject as well? What kind of benefits can one person get, can the artist get as well as, as, well as the subject? If you've always wanted to be an artist, you know, say, for me, like I said, I don't like giving tips. I would just tell you just to fucking do it. You know, just do it. Like, the moment you start doing something that you've always wanted to do, it's gonna feel great when you finally do it. Even if it doesn't, it's not perfect. You know, even if it's, if if you feel like it's not that good, man, just keep on doing it. It's there's no secret recipe. There's no like there's no magic. Um, you know, there's there's no magic behind um, art, really. I mean, at least the craft of doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just practice. Just keep on doing it, and and you'll get better. Yeah. Well, for me personally, the benefits that I get out of it is that it serves like an anchor for me. It's been drawing since I was seven years old, right? Wow. And, and from there, and I, ne I never went to art school. It's just I just started, kept on doing it, you know, practicing and practicing, right? Okay. There are times like difficult. You know, and there's so many things in life that could be distracting. Art has always been the num the one thing that determines me. Okay. But yeah, it's, there's so many different things that I do, like martial arts, you know, dance. I, I'm also a writer by trade. But the one thing that always reminds me of who I am is art. It's like an anchor. When, you, when you're at sea and you're getting lost, you put that anchor and it keeps you there. You know, it keeps you in one place. It tells you where, where, where it, it, it brings me home. You know, that's just for me. As for the model... I mean, why do you think they commission you to, to draw them? Let me tell you a, a story that could possibly answer this question. Okay. Um, back in the day, I, th I think about 10 years ago, 2000-something, 2010, right? We, we started a sketching group in Chip Quezon City. Okay. It's, a, it's every afternoon in this bar. We will close the doors and we will do a live sketching session with a nude model. Eventually, the, the city government found out about that oh. and they banned it because they said it's public nudity. Huh? So the artists in our group, we actually had to go to the, uh, to the city hall to defend ourselves. Like, oh, this is not public nudity. It's forced and that guy did something great. But the, the, the one testimony that um, won us the case was the testimony of one of the models. She explained uh, to the people in the, in the hearing that when she was there and she was naked in front of all these strangers, she was scared as fuck. Like she was so scared and she was so insecure. It's the first time she's ever been naked in front of so many people. So there's a feeling of fear, right? But when one, the moment that one artist went up to her on stage and just moved her hair, because her hair was down her face, and moved her hair like that to her ear, to her ear that very moment, she felt completely beautiful and safe. That <laughs> moment, like she said, when when Ar when his, his name is Arnold, when Arnold came up to me and said, "Hold on, there's something that's that's missing." And we her hair to her ear, and yeah, her hair, she's like, "I felt so comfortable." How did that win the case, though? <laughs> well, they, they they said it's like for them, it's it we're doing something that's more than that that's not scandalous. You know, it's not. It's not something that uh, you know that that can can be deemed as uh, something like you know being a scandalous. It's like it's 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 art and it's it's something more profound than just nudity. You know. Yeah. We even had like a a model who had breast cancer, who who lost one of oh. her breasts, right? Yeah. yeah. 
and she drew, we drew her as she is, and she said I've never felt so beautiful. Oh, since that's so big. Yeah, I mean, wow. Something, you know. I guess that's something that uh, a model can get out of it. It's 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 the appreciation of who you are. When yeah, you don't yeah. appreciate yours, like I said a while earlier, you know, no one will appreciate your physical attributes more than somebody who's drawing you. It's, <laughs> <laughs> That's a more sophisticated way of checking somebody out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, through art. How would you call yourself? Pen and ink artist or a nude artist? A visual artist. A visual artist. I explore different subjects. It really depends on what I want, honestly. Nude art and portraits that I'm doing. Well, so I'm gonna excite. <laughs> I get really attached to an artwork if I know the person well. If I'm connected with the person in a deeper level, the personal level, I get to explore things and details about who they are that they might not be aware of themselves. You don't necessarily create somebody's portrait. You make an interpretation of who they are. The fans don't really exactly look the same as they would expect it to be, but that's just how I see them. 